Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. I'm Bruce and I wanted to give you a shop tour. I've never done one of these. Just wanted to give you a little bit of what I'm working with. This is a two stall garage shop and it's roughly 25 feet long and 23 feet deep. And I've got nice tall ceilings, so I'm able to use some of the wall space. I've got 10 foot ceilings in here. This is not meant to be any kind of bragging session or anything. I am gonna talk about a few of the tools that I have to give you an idea of maybe what I'm working with or ideas of what you might want. Feel free if you have questions to drop me a comment below. So let's get into it. Starting out over here, I have the Laguna P Flux 3. This is the newest addition to my shop. Um, I, th about three years ago, I had the whole shop wired with a separate sub panel and I had 220 circuits as well as multiple other 110 circuits wired in here. And ironically, this is the first tool that I've put in here that has 220. So nothing like future proofing and then not using it. But this has been a good machine so far. Um, I did all of the hard piping in here just to make everything more efficient. And so far I'm liking the way that it's going. At the time that I had the panel and the wiring done, uh, I actually had the guy upgrade my lights. So he daisy chained a bunch of these together. The garage previously only had these two. Uh, they are T8 standard uh, fluorescents. He bypassed the ballast and now they're LEDs and he added a bunch more in here. So that's why it's nice and bright. These are all LED. They're quiet, they don't hum, and I've gotten a lot of use out of these lights. Right here I have the uh, Supermax 1938 drum sander. I use this thing a lot. I make a lot of cutting boards and just for a lot of projects, especially with figured woods, this is a lifesaver because a planer can tend to tear out some of those figured woods, but this thing gets it dimensioned just right. Uh, this is actually just a quick and dirty project loosely based on J Bates air cleaner cart. I've got a, uh, like a squirrel cage blower motor from an old furnace in there. And then uh, four inputs with filters that I can take out and swap, clean, whatever I need to do. But that thing does a good job to clean the air in my shop. Right here, I have the Grizzly G0452Z. It is a six inch helical head jointer and I've had that thing almost for five years. I use it all the time. It has convinced me that I'm going to, when I upgrade to other milling tools, they're gonna have a helical head with carbide inserts. Disregard the mess that's over here. I'm in the process of setting up a tool wall, but this is my big hand tool workbench. This is the J Bates plan and uh, I built this a couple years ago, got a nice big leg vise on there that I built. And right now it's currently mostly uh, just storage underneath. This is a lot of uh, figured stuff that I'm kind of holding on to for special projects, but um, I'm gonna be digging into that soon. So I really like this bench. It's really solid, made of Southern yellow pine. So it's very inexpensive. I think the entire bench um, might cost like 150 bucks. So good option right here. Before I go any farther, I wanted to tell you that a lot of these projects that I've done in here, I've made videos about them. Some of them I haven't, but um, I'll leave links below in the description to all of the videos that I've made of things that I'm showing you. Usually on the end of the workbench, I keep my Festool CT48E. This is a pretty recent purchase. Uh, I, I've got this uh, Mercadero sander. It's a finished sander. Does a really good job, especially with this dust extractor but I have it kind of hide underneath here. When I need it, I pull it out and do some sanding and it collects almost all of the dust. If you'll notice here, that's my great grandfather's mallet that we think was made out of a uh, wagon wheel. Did a video about a uh, mallet that I made as a replica for that and uh, that case as well. So links below. All right, I wanna tell you about this island I have over here. Uh, this is the DeWalt DW735 planer. It's been a really good one for me. It has straight knives and I've had some suggestions to upgrade that to the uh, helical head. I'll probably just upgrade the entire planer, um, but not sure. That's a little bit down the road. This is just a cheap card I threw together that holds random stuff. I'll probably eventually be getting this air cleaner cart and put the uh, planer on it so that I'm taking up less room in my shop. Let me tell you about the rest of the stuff I have in this island here. This is, I can't remember the number, but the rigid cabinet saw. 
It's been a really good saw for me. Uh, I've just made some zero clearance inserts there, but uh, it's really heavy and steady for kind of an entry level saw. And that's what I've liked because I get very consistent results out of that. This uh, kind of outfeed table workbench is one that one of the first things I made uh, based on a, another YouTuber's plans. And I just have a bunch of random storage under here, like my track saw, some of my cordless nailers, um, you know, screws, different glues, and that kind of thing that I access really often. Uh, back behind me, I have the uh, G0555 LANV. This is a really common grizzly bandsaw style. And um, this is just the anniversary edition that they had at the time. But uh, I like it, it's a good saw. I wanna upgrade it because it only has about six inches of resaw capacity. So that's been something that I've bumped up against and really want more for. Um, over here I have the storage rack. This is also built on, based on a Jay Bates model that he did. I don't have a video on making this, but this entire rack was made for about $30. So really cheap way to get a ton of lumber, as you can see. I have a problem, I collect tons of stuff. Uh, I've got spots here in these bays for vertical lumber storage. Uh, I did a video on that, just a quick like shop organization type thing, and it's still working well because I have access to everything very easily. Uh, like I mentioned, I make a lot of cutting boards, so this is kind of a staged process where I have different blanks. I glue them together and then they sit here and wait until I get orders and I take them upstairs to laser engrave them. Over here, I have the garage door. This is a big two, two car garage door. And I'm in Jackson, Mississippi, and it gets crazy hot here in the summer. And they typically don't put insulated doors in. So I actually added this insulation and it's done a pretty good job. It's only rated at about R8, which is not the most, but it does a decent job to hold in the heat and cool. I have two walls in this shop that are insulated. At the time that we built this house, uh, I didn't know I was gonna use this as a shop, so there was just no forethought in doing that. It would have been very easy to insulate this outside wall while we were at it, but I didn't. So this wall is actually not insulated. It's probably the biggest issue with this shop. Uh, with three sides now and the ceiling having insulation, it does a decent job. Uh, I didn't mention the mini split that I have over there. I've had some issues with this unit, um, so I'm not gonna go into a bunch of details with that. In the spring, I will be putting in another unit. Uh, haven't quite decided on what that's gonna be, but that is definitely gonna be a way that I'm gonna keep the shop cool. Right here is just uh, your basic shop vac with a Dust Deputy Cyclone on it. I use it currently to collect dust off of the miter saw. This is the 12 inch sliding miter saw from DeWalt. It's been a great saw for me. Um, I don't like how much room it takes out the back of the saw, especially when you have a hose hooked up to it. I want some of the other models that have where they can sit up flat against a wall and I would gain quite a few feet if this could shove back closer to the door. I don't open the garage door very often. Um, this is my Porter Cable floor standing drill press. Uh, nothing super fancy, but it's really nice. Has a very easily adjustable depth stop and um, I've gotten a lot of use out of that already. This is the Fisher Shop flip top uh, tool cart that I made last year and I've got so much stuff on here, I don't know if I can flip it right now, but um, it's a great plan and the reason I like it is you, you just plug the cart in from the one cord and you can have multiple tools, like I have a grinder and my oscillating spindle sander in there. I don't ever have to worry with the cords or plug something else in. I can just flip it and go, it's ready to go. Uh, that and everything in my shop is on wheels and that's been helpful because I have rearranged this thing a few times and it's just nice to know that it's not set wherever you put it. This big open empty space right here is going to be for my new Onefinity CNC router. And I've actually got it in boxes sitting right here. I'm one project behind. I've got to make a table for it to sit here. I've already got the casters and I'm ready to build that thing. It's just gonna be a basic strong table for that thing to sit on. Right here, I've got just a basic shelf that I'm storing a ton of scrap on. It's probably not the best solution and a forever solution, but it's working for me right now. And this shelf only costs about 50 bucks. So I've got a lot of little offcuts sitting here. 
Uh, over here, I've got a few things that have taken on more items than I ever intended for them to. That's kind of why I'm building a tool wall and some other stuff. This is like a drill charging station that I did a while back and I've added a um, charger for like my big track saw batteries and stuff. Got the tracks hung up and a bunch of chargers. But a lot of these marking tools and epoxy and all of that, a lot of that will be moving to the new, new kind of hand tool wall so that I have quicker access to it rather than being over here. This paint shelf holds a ton of stuff. These are all of my solvents like denatured alcohol, acetone, a bunch of rattle cans, spray paints, and smaller cans as well as the big ones that we use very regularly. Uh, I've got tons of different tapes, you know, that that works really well. And this is the little uh, kids workbench. So when my kids come out here, they've got tool benches. They've got their own bucket of scraps so they can, anything in there, they can pick it out, use a rasp, whatever. They love coming out here and messing around, putting on their earmuffs and um, just going to town on some scraps. So let me show you this other small bay that I have in here. Oh, real quick. Uh, this is the clamp wall that I have. I actually rearranged it recently and freed up another spot. So I'm gonna be making some more holders. That way I can kind of grow into it a little bit, but I've got a bunch of my clamps I use for cutting boards and just panel clamps. These Harbor Freight clamps are really great. I, it, you know, they're like three bucks a piece, go load up on a ton of them. I get a lot of use out of those. And then I just use the French cleats for other stuff. Uh, this is just a laser cut box that I did to put my cutting board feet that I use regularly and a, a marker that I can just throw over the edge of a cutting board, drill it, and then the screws for it. I just nest all that together and put it up here out of the way. Let me show you in here. Nothing too exciting here. It's just basic lawn stuff that I need access to for the yard. And then over here, I have actually parked my wood lathe. Um, I don't use it real often and this kind of gets it out of the way because the CNC is going to be taken up where it previously was. This is the Nova Comet 2 and it's been a good little mini lathe. I've done a lot of stuff, got a lot more blanks of stuff to do. This is an upcoming project. I'm building a tool wall for the mechanics type tools. So if you saw on my outfeed table, I had a lot of stuff all over it, wrenches and socket sets and that kind of thing. They're all gonna go here. It's tools I don't use very regularly, but um, I do need access to for you know the machines or yard tools or whatever. So that's all gonna go here. And just to this side, I've got room for full sheet storage. I made sure when I rearranged all of this to have that because I'm going to be using some full sheets of plywood um, just so I get cost benefit to use on the CNC router. So this is a full sheet of MDF and you can see it sits here just fine. Uh, this small door here, I just used what leftover insulation I had to do half of it. And um, this is where I come in and out with materials the most so that I'm not having to open the big door. Thanks for coming along and checking out the shop. Um, I'm sure I left some stuff off of here. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Again, I've put links to a bunch of different videos I've done on this stuff in the shop down in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.